So, the newly released Mac Studio is a supercharged version of the Mac Mini, and it's got an overlap with the MacBook Pro, which in itself is a very high-powered machine aimed at content creators. If you're deciding to get either the Mac Studio or the recent 16-inch MacBook Pro, I will try to give you a breakdown of both systems as I'm using them for the last week or so. Well, I've been using the Mac Studio for a week and the MacBook Pro for the last three, four months. I'm gonna try and be as unbiased as possible. I will just list the facts that should help you decide. And towards the end, I'll give you my vote on which one I think people should get. Now, before we begin, remember to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm as that would help my channel. First of all, you should already know what you need to buy. If you're deciding between the 16 inch MacBook Pro or the base Mac Studio, then I would recommend that you get the MacBook Pro if you're looking for a portable yet powerful machine. The performance difference in some cases isn't so substantial that you chain yourself down and buy yourself a desktop over a laptop. With that being said, if you're someone who wants the fastest, the best, then Mac Studio might just be the right fit for you. For me, the MacBook Pro has been a desktop replacement. Now I hardly even use my Windows desktop anymore apart from gaming. Lately, as I'm getting more involved in content creation, I decided to invest in the Mac Studio, thinking that it would help further streamline my workflow, which honestly it actually does because it processes things a lot faster than my MacBook Pro. Now, I only bought the Mac Studio by itself and used my own screen, mouse, and keyboard. As for the specs, this base Mac Studio is configured with 10-core CPU, 24-core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, and 512 gigabytes of SSD. As for the ports, the Mac Studio offers two USB-C ports on the front, along with the SD card reader, and on the back, it has four Thunderbolt 4 ports. Also, it has the 10 gigabit Ethernet, two USB-A ports, one HDMI 2.0 port, which supports 4K at 60 frames per second, and a headphone jack and power button. On the other hand, the 16-inch MacBook Pro has the 10-core CPU, 16-core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and 512 gigabytes of SSD. Now, my personal MacBook Pro is slightly different as it has a larger SSD, which is one terabyte. But all their specs like CPU, GPU, and the memory are about the same as the base 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, as for pricing, the base Mac Studio is priced at $2,000 or around $3,800 if you get the whole system with the studio display, mouse, and keyboard. The base 16-inch MacBook Pro is $2,499. But at this price point, the MacBook Pro includes a nice keyboard, a nice trackpad, a decent enough webcam, amazing sounding speakers, and probably the best display in any laptop available. When it comes to features, I think the MacBook Pro easily wins this round, but when it comes to performance, the Mac Studio definitely wins that round. But how much faster is the base Mac Studio than the base 16-inch MacBook Pro? Well, let's find out and let's take a deep dive into the Mac Studio's performance. Now, I really don't like doing synthetic benchmarks, but today I'll make an exception. Here's a Geekbench score from the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro processor. The single core performance was 1762 and the multi-core performance was 11,966. Now, in comparison, the base Mac Studio with the M1 Max processor scored higher. Again, single core score was 1773 and the multi-core was 12,721. On a single core performance, that's less than 1% difference, but on a multi-core performance, that's a 6% difference compared with the base Mac Studio being 6% faster than the base 16-inch MacBook Pro. So my question is, how does that really translate to real life use case? For video rendering, I tested by using DaVinci Resolve as that's my primary video rendering software. All my videos that I've ever made have been on DaVinci Resolve. Now for this test, I used a 4K video shot on a Sony A7C and the Sony A6400 camera. The project timeline is 14 and a half minutes long. And by the way, do check out that video. It's about Mac apps that I use for boosting productivity. 
Now, I rendered the same project on both machines. It took 6 minutes and 51 seconds to render that video on the MacBook Pro. Do keep in mind that it has 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which by the way does not impact the test at all in any way. On the Mac Studio, I rendered the exact same project and that took 4 minutes and 18 seconds. If you do the math, the Mac Studio is about 40% or about 2 minutes and 33 seconds faster with the M1 Max chip when compared with the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. Now the Mac Studio clearly wins that round. Now I tested two other videos from the past which had more fusion components to it and if you average the three videos then on average the Mac Studio is about 40 to 45 percent faster than the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. Now here's my question to you. Do you think that performance gain is worth considering the Mac Studio? I mean for me that 2 minute and 33 seconds delay is not really a deal breaker but if I was someone that was really in a hurry and really needed to encode and render projects quickly then I would go with the Mac Studio. For this next test, I tested using Blender. I downloaded the free projects from the Blender website. Basically, the project files were Blender splash screens from previous versions. The very first thing that I did was I went to Preferences and then changed the Cycle Render devices to Metal. Then I selected both options. Next, I went to Render Properties and then I changed the render engine from EV to Cycles. Under device, I chose GPU Compute. Then I started the render on both machines. The average render time was about 2 minutes and 34 seconds on the Mac Studio. But on the MacBook Pro, it took 4 minutes and 1 second to render the same animation. So the Mac Studio with the M1 Max chip was about 44% faster when it came to rendering this specific project in Blender. Next, I did the same exact test, but this time I switched to EV Engine. On the base Mac Studio, it took 9 seconds to render the frame. On the MacBook Pro, it took 11 seconds to render the same frame. So about 20% difference there. While EV offers faster render times, the quality isn't so spectacular but it's meant for quick rendering. I also did some other animation tests which resulted in Mac Studio being 20 to 40% faster depending on the different projects that I tested. Overall, the Blender loads a lot faster and functions more smoothly on the Mac Studio than on the MacBook Pro. It is a noticeable difference, but if you're primarily doing 3D work, then I highly recommend that you get the M1 Ultra Mac Studio at that point. If you want true performance, then I would look at the latest Intel 12900K with an RTX 3080 or 3090 card on a Windows platform. That's where the 3D rendering works the best. Now we can do these tests all day long. So the end result is that Mac Studio with the M1 Max chip is definitely faster with the MacBook Pro. Now what about everyday use? Well in that area both machines work extremely well. If you're the type of person that has 40 browser tabs open and you're watching videos and let's say you're shopping as well and then the Mac Studio will not disappoint you, neither will the MacBook Pro. I can do all those type of things at once and it will still continue to run smoothly without showing lag on both systems. Next, I tested the SSD. The SSD on the MacBook Pro was definitely faster than on the Mac Studio but not really by much. Here are the speed test results. On the Mac Studio, I got around 560 megabytes per second read and 4789 write. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, I got 5310 megabytes per second read and 4852 write. So the MacBook Pro was slightly faster than the Mac Studio. Now I do have two complaints about the Mac Studio. The first one is fan noise. This is probably the loudest, if not the loudest, Mac at idle speed. I get that this machine has a small blower fan and therefore it's spinning at a faster rate. At idle, this machine is making close to 29 decibels. Now, when you compare this with the MacBook Pro, it's completely noiseless. The only time when fan kicks on is when I'm rendering something or doing some heavy intensive work. Other than that, it's really quiet and adds no noise to your work environment. On the other side, I can clearly hear the Mac Studio even when I'm thinking at my desk. Another big reason the fan noise is prominent is due to close proximity. Think of it this way, 
if you're doing a voiceover or if you're recording in a studio, then the fan noise will definitely get captured in your recording sessions. I think a solution might be placing the Mac Studio underneath your desk or moving it further away might help reduce the fan noise. My second complaint is speakers. Now, on the audio side, Apple could have done a little better job by improving the audio quality on the Mac Studio. I mean, when you compare the audio from the MacBook Pro, the Mac Studio audio is just pulls apart. If Apple made the audio slightly louder, then I wouldn't be complaining about it at this point. I guess most of the people that are buying a Mac Studio would most likely use their own sound system or speakers so it might be a non-issue for most users. Also, if you plan on getting the studio display, then it comes with a spectacular sound system. So again, you may not ever hear the sound coming out of the Mac Studio. I personally paired my sound system with the Sony XB900 Bluetooth speakers, and I haven't looked back since. It works pretty great for me now. So which one would you choose? Deciding between a laptop and a desktop is really up to you. If you want a desktop form factor, then go with the Mac Studio and vice versa. The main reason anybody would buy a desktop is for maximum performance. And if you are after that extreme performance, then get the Mac Studio. And if you're a person that does a lot of 3D rendering, then go with the PC that has an Intel 12900K and an RTX 3080 or 3090 graphics card. You'll be more happy with that route. In the end, you should know which device would be the best fit for you. My vote goes for the MacBook Pro, mainly because it's a complete machine that delivers great performance. Maybe not extreme performance, but great performance that you can take it with you wherever you go. But if you want true extreme performance, then definitely check out the Mac Studio with the M1 Max. If you got the budget for it, try the M1 Ultra, and that's what I could recommend. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you really enjoy watching this video. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video. Take care.